Welcome everyone to the Apex Sunday podcast where myself, Robert Ross and John Dowsett discuss Formula One and MotoGP races. This week, we're talking about the 2022 Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And John, before we get into qualifying, what a bizarre atmosphere and situation we had going into this race with the uh, missile attack, with the uh, public executions a few weeks ago. It's just a weird place to race and concerns over the safety of the track. Now, what do you think of, of all of that combined together? I, I just want it gone. I want Saudi Arabia off the calendar. I, you know, it's, it's just not right to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Domenicali um, questioned the, the longevity of this race, whether it was going to stay on the calendar or not. And it really doesn't belong. You know, it's just that the crimes against humanity are just so huge in that country. And the press conference, I saw the drivers sort of like holding back on coming back. So, you know, they've been talking about it behind the scenes and so forth. But, Absolutely. Uh, in regard to the danger of the track, you know, it's funny that often we see people say, well, the drivers of today have nothing on the drivers of yesterday, that kind of thing. And it's in, in some regard, yes, we all are born in the time that we're, we live in, therefore we can't you know, magically become something we aren't from, <laughs> from days gone by and so forth. But you could tell that like Leclerc and science in particular from the press conference, they acknowledge the track is pretty dangerous by today's standards, but they also were thrilled to drive it. Right. And I thought that really showed that no matter what era you're in, like these, you know, if they were in the past era, they would have adapted to whatever the situations were there. You know, they, they would probably reject doing certain things that they used to do because, you know, you know, we saw Jackie Stewart lose like over 60 people during his time in Formula One. So, but, you know, the new drivers are just as courageous and daring as the old drivers, as far as I'm concerned. It's just, you know, they live in a different environment. And, and there, I, in what you're saying, you can't compare it to the days of your uh, dangerous, beyond belief dangerous, this track. And you know what? Mm -hmm the safety measures that they put in place, they put it, put them in there for a reason. And I don't know. I mean, when you look at that impact that Schumacher had in qualifying, yeah. that's just frightening, frightening. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I personally thought he was dead, you know, and, and the way that the coverage uh, was being fed to us, it certainly looked like that was a possibility. Yes. Yeah, they were tense for quite a while. They because the uh, the radios are all 100% digital now. They're not the analog, so it knocked out the radio entirely. So they couldn't communicate right. with them at all. And there was no replay. And and as soon as there's no replay, you know it's serious. Yeah. Yeah. Because you you don't play replays of bad accidents, right? No. Until you you know the results, so forth. Right. So. Yeah. You know, and I saw some people go, "Well, Schumacher's crash prone and." You should be able to support. It's like, well, every driver has big crashes every once in a while. It's just part of the sport. They're, you know, yeah. the circuit, you have to push to the very edge and you're, you, you can see them sliding all over the place all the time. Back to your point about last week with uh, the new cars, definitely harder to drive. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So should we move on to qualifying? Let's do it. Okay. First off, I found it one of the most exciting qualifying sessions in a long time, just because of the the speed of the circuit and the way that they're <laughs> moving through all those sweeping corners, particularly Leclerc. Uh, you know, both Ferrari drivers were spectacular to watch. Uh, the pole lap, though, that Perez did, we didn't really see live. They were concentrating on Leclerc. And he seemed quite astounded that he had been beaten because his lap was just incredible. But uh, sorry, Perez's must have been incredible as well. And he did it all in the final sector, all right. in the final sector. You know, phenomenal. What what stood out for me with qualifying was the lesser cars, not the lesser mm. cars, but not the 
the front runners when you look at the cars that aren't behaving properly and Hamilton, oh my God. Yeah. I mean, talk about a display of, but what a display of car control. You know, it's amazing he didn't go into the wall. Same with the Williams, same with, um, actually the Alpines are moving around a lot too. And and watching that and the the what must be going through those drivers' heads as they're sliding around that track. I mean, my <laughs> God. And, and in the slow-mo, when you watch them gather it back up again, you think, mm. yeah, 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 that's pretty cool. I could do that. And then you watch it in real time, and their reaction time is just insane. Yeah, that's what was so exciting is that, like, this is truly an edge circuit. Like, you're, you have to go to the very edge to get a fast time. And if you screw up a little bit, you'll scrub off a little bit of speed, and you'll be gone, right? So, but, yeah, Lewis seemed quite lost all weekend, didn't he? Uh, couldn't well, find the setup. Couldn't get heat into the tires. As they 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 stated that they tried something new in the setup for qual qualifying, and it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, it didn't work. Uh, but you know what, man, that track it's it it's very frightening. Very frightening that they have to drive at that edge. Also, on top of this, they have um, linked corners that if you mess up the first one that's why my take on why Latifi crashed is right. he messed up one entry and two corners later, he's into the wall. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's surprised to see the, uh, the Alpines were up there at least in qualifying, weren't they? And they mm -hmm. went through the race as well for until you know, they ran into some problems at least. And also the, the Red Bulls, like, where do you think they stand? Like, can compare it to Ferrari, do you think they're pretty much even Steven? Sort of looks like it, doesn't it? I think mm -hmm. the, that, that it, it's become clear that the power plant to have is Ferrari. That's sort of a given. And um, Leclerc is going with higher downforce than, yeah. the, than the Red Bulls did. So, you know, maybe that's the difference in why Perez was able to pip him in the long run. Right. And we saw... Valtteri and Magnussen way up there again as well, right? Yeah. So yeah. that was good. And Schumacher had his accident. He was pushing pretty hard. He might have made it into Q3, but uh, you know, that didn't oh, happen. I, I think for sure he would have made it into Q3. Right. You know, just the way he was driving was, was actually brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. I'd love to know what went wrong. Yeah, you saw Ocon have a very similar incident, but he just, just happened to save it, he said. So <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, the the Haas team and the uh, Alfa Romeo team again surprising and you know being up there again, and then the McLarens had a little bit of improvement in qualifying, but still not like they had last season. It's power plant, isn't it? It's like all yeah, of all the, the Mercedes, Mercedes. Were, were down, weren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what about commentary? Did you switch it or did you stay with the Sky? I couldn't figure out how to switch it. Okay, <laughs> so I was stuck with the with the hysterics and and the mute right. button. Right. Okay. Yeah. Anything else about qualifying, or should we move to the race? Let's move to the race. Okay, let's do that. So in regards to the race, obviously it was always going to be between the Ferraris and the Red Bull drivers, unless something, you know, in terms of reliability happened again. But, you know, we, we did have some reliability issues again with other cars, right? So Alonso got stuck in gear, Ricardo stopped, Bottas stopped, mm -hmm. and at least Ricardo, sorry, uh, Bottas and Alonso would have scored points. So we'll see how long this sort of story of unreliability, which has returned to formula one after so many years of, you know, the most rock solid reliability we've ever seen in the history of the sport, basically, obviously with the new cars they are having some issues with that. There's the change as well. Now that they've got rules about engines and penalties for engines, they're more apt to 
park the car if you see a big spike in in temperature or something like that whereas before they just drive it right, right. um uh, yeah so that's one of the downfalls of 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 that to me i'd like to see a you know somebody that needs to manage their car uh, right. and finish a race but right. that wasn't the case yeah yeah and kevin magnuson again he was you know he's he's back in the sport and he's doing very well and nico got up into the points as well at least briefly with the aston martin though you know they're still suffering but for kevin I'm gonna say like he had that sore neck issue and that's no surprise after being out of the sport for so long yeah and this kind of circuit you know with the back and forth the lateral g's must be affecting your neck quite a lot um i, and you I think it's on every track it's on mm -hmm. every track right i mean the g's that they're pulling is just crazy when you were racing did you have a hans device or they weren't around at that time um, they were just coming on into the picture at that point in time. Yeah. Right. So I did. did you, ever, you never used one ever? No, okay. no. I guess that if you have a big impact, it keeps your neck from snapping because the chains, right? That's right. That's so, right. It's if you look at what it's done for deaths in motorsport, it's very clear that the majority of deaths were from snapping necks on impact. Yeah. Um, and so yeah it's gone now that's a wonderful thing yeah, i remember when they introduced it people were like oh i can't we can't drive with these and all that but now they probably can't imagine driving without it right <laughs> so yeah yeah it's so like the halo it's like right. the halo you know I, right. I there were people that you know did not want the halo but it's already saved lives yes absolutely so uh we did see some good battling with uh alonzo and ocon in particular that was good uh, the battle between Leclerc and Verstappen at the end of the race, you know, it's nice to see contention right towards the very end. Unfortunately, Leclerc couldn't quite get back on him, but that was a nice race. And any races within the field that you liked? You mentioned them. The, right. There's, you know, there's not a lot more than that. No lost uh, love between, in terms of on circuit racing between Alonso and Ocon. You know, the at least my commentary team was sort of, well, that was a bit a bit hard on, on Lonzo from Ocon, but what did you think? I thought it was uh, wonderful. Yeah, I and, did too. And, 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 you know, they didn't touch each other. They raced very cleanly. Mm -hmm. And um, this is not a team that's racing for the championship. No. So let, let them race. Yeah, it, it, didn't, it didn't cost them anything. I don't think it cost them any points. So yeah. go for it. Right. And Ocon's got something to prove. I mean, he's up against, you know, the, the grand master, isn't he? Yeah. But he's, he does, he's doing very well. It's just too bad the car, you know, hasn't made much of a step this year compared to last. And as we said, last race, the Aston Martins and McLarens kind of down. Uh, George Russell had a bit of a lonely race, you know, finishing in fifth. But he so, finished in fifth. How spectacular yeah. is that? It speaks volumes. I mean, I'm I'm very, very, very impressed. I kind of questioned after the first race whether, you know, he was going to be delegated to uh, definitely a number two driver and not be able to open it up. But man, what a great race by him! Yeah, and they have to. Uh, like, I wonder how these setup changes are going to happen more often because of the new car, or because you rarely see Hamilton loss. Like he was astounded that he was six tenths or seven tenths down in a single sector. Cause you know, he's just not mm -hmm. used to that. Right. So, yeah. Well, I think the other thing is, is that, and it's huge is, you know, for the last decade, they've been able to go into a track and have a whole database of setups of what they're going to do, depending on temperature, depending on tires, all of the data was there and they don't have any of that now it's all mm -hmm. they're they're starting from from scratch they got new tires you know it's they don't have the data on tires the so suspension's it's different because of the tires the suspension's absolutely simplified and so forth yeah. so so how do you set up the car wings are different yeah yeah and the porpoising i noticed a lot more and you could hear it on the onboards and so forth as well like just mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of bouncing so yeah. So that's what Russell's saying. That's their primary concern at Mercedes. Uh, but all the cars are porpoising during this race. Well, I think that the Mercedes and the McLaren drivers from both teams stated that 
this is a long-term problem and mm-hmm. you know it could it, they might not get it together this season yeah and hopefully they do but back to the mercedes engine like on the straights it seemed to be the slowest you know the, all the mercedes powered cars seem to be pretty slow like getting past very quickly and uh mm-hmm. you know lewis saying he had difficulty fighting the haas i mean this is just totally new territory for mercedes you know being back in the field a little bit yeah, um, and he, the only way he could pass Magnuson was on a lunge, as <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's like a late break, and and hope to God you can make it through the corner. It's the only way he could do it. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got that, and you've got the fact that they've raised the car up a little bit, so they've lost some of the ground effects. So they've lost cornering ability. Yeah, and they have a weaker powertrain. You put those two things together, and it's amazing that Russell did what he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. You know, that's why he was in no man's land. He's sort of faster than the midfield, but not as fast as the top two teams at this point. Mm-hmm. And like you say, I hope that they, you know, they fix those those issues that they're having, but it could take a while. And, you know, like we said last time, how does the budget cap affect in-season development? And, you know, could they be crippled almost already? It's hard to say, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. And just... uh the lack of reliability again, you know, Bottas out, Alonso out, Magnuson, didn't he go out as well? Five, there were five cars that were DNFs, right? Right. And I Yuki didn't even make the race. So he had some engine issues with his uh, fuel pump again on the Red Bull side. But the Red Bulls did finish the race this, this time. <laughs> and uh, Perez Seven got, DNFs. Seven. Wow. That's a lot. For modern yeah. F1, right? Al- Albon, Bottas, Alonso, Danny, Latifi, Sonoto, and who didn't even start? Yuki didn't even start, and mm-hmm. Schumacher, who didn't even start. So right. I guess, yeah, it's five. It was five because right. Yuki didn't start. So you can't right. call it a DNF. So how would you uh, rate this race? Um, I, it, to me, it was a snooze fest. Mm-hmm. I loved seeing the the little bit of dicing that was in there. That's fresh, and I like that. Um, probably a three and a half. Yeah, based on the qualifying was more interesting than the race I found. Mm-hmm. It was that sort of ultimate speed kind of shootout that they had. But the race itself was kind of long and... You know, like you say, a little bit of interest here for some you know, bursts of racing and then not much racing in between. <laughs> So I think uh, I'll give it a four. It wasn't, you know, spectacularly great. What about driver of the race? For me, it, somebody we never saw, which was Russell, for him oh, yeah. to to figure out how to set up that car and then take it to best of the rest. Mm-hmm. Pretty phenomenal. I'll go with uh, Fernando. I was really impressed by his drive throughout the entire race until he dropped out, <laughs> which is rather unfortunate. You know, and uh, we saw Max win the race and score points that he, you know, he had zero points in his first race. So uh, Leclerc, though, finishing second, you know, he's got to understand, and I'm sure he does already, that, you know, consistently finishing on the podium when you're fighting Max Verstappen is absolutely essential to the championship. Yes. So, you know, everyone's talking about early days between these two. I think science is coming up to speed still a little bit, but he'll get there. Perez, you know, he had, we had the safety car and he came in just before that. So, you know, the switch in pit stops and speeds, he got shuffled down into fourth. But I still don't see him winning as much as Max this season. Uh, well, he set a new record. He set a new record in, in the longest it's taken a driver to get a pole. To pole position, what was it? right? Uh, the previous record, I think, was 150, and his was 290. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah, uh, whereas Carlos and Leclerc I see as being more even, whereas Max, I think, is a step ahead of Perez. I mean, Perez is a great driver, but Max is, you know, ultimate optimization of speed and so forth he was really whiny in that race i don't know if you heard the radio but i just thought oh my god max like really 
Well, it goes back to what we were talking about last podcast. Like he, he gets wound up and so forth. And you saw Lewis, you know, after even failing to get into Q2, he's just like, sorry, guys, setup was wrong. He was just calm through it, you know, yeah. worked through it, so that kind of thing. But as you said, you know, this is how Max works and Lewis is working in this way. Uh, Lewis has mm-hmm. improved throughout his entire career. Max, I would say, has probably improved a little bit, but you know, I, he still is the missile. But at least we didn't see any bad moves this race during the uh, the battle between Leclerc, so that was nice. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got to mm-hmm. realize that he's got to be able to finish, and every point is ex- essential this year, as it was last season. Yes, so. I think I think Leclerc is 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 mature beyond his years, mm-hmm. and he's shown he's shown that right from the start. So uh, I've got faith in him and being, uh, being able to hold up to the pressure. Cause th- this has got to be just insane pressure for him that he's never experienced before from, you know, from everything from the team, from fans, from mm-hmm. sponsors. You know, this, yeah. Yeah. This, I tried to put myself in the shoes of the drivers, this, this uh, race and just imagine you know, you're driving for Ferrari, so you've got all that history behind you and all the expectations. And, you know, compared to the last two seasons where, yeah, he got a couple of poles, but they were never in for a race win, basically. And just they struggled so much. And then right away, now that they're not struggling and they're competitive, both the drivers just seem to be taking in stride. Just like, yep, I'm at the front now. This is what I have to do. So I have faith in Charles as well. I think, uh, you know, People have talked about Lewis and Max, and rightfully so, but we've, talked, we've spoken about all these other drivers, uh, Leclerc, Sainz, Gasly, Sunida looks like he has a lot of potential, you know, Norris and so forth. So there's still a lot of really, really great drivers in the sport, and mm-hmm. Max and Lewis will not have it easy if one of those drivers is in a competitive car. And then finally, yeah. Bottas. Again, wow. Like he must be very, very happy. <laughs> like he's out qualified one Mercedes in both races and you know he didn't finish, but other than that, great race yeah. for him. Yeah. Yeah. He's definitely calmer, smiling. It's good well, as much as he smiles. Uh yeah, it's good do you see. think that goes back to what you were saying about the stress and the pressure and so forth? Like is it just he's doing better in that kind of team? Well, there's there's that, and there's also you know he truly believes that he's a he's a potential world champion, and he's not being given the chance. The frustration that comes along with that's got to be immense, right? And now that's gone. You know, now all he really has to do is beat his teammate. Um, he knows he's not going to become a world champion. I don't think no. he's going to get another chance at at a at a top team, uh, yeah. and he's going to have fun. So good yeah. for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, these some people sort of bother the drivers or talk down about, you know, they're so confident, they're cocky and all that. But if you don't have confidence, there's no way you can drive a car. No speeds on a circuit like this. No, no, <laughs> you it's can, just impossible. You can't drive a go-kart and be competitive without that. Right. You know, it, it, these guys, whether they show it or not is another thing, but I will guarantee you every single one of those drivers on the track think that they're the best got dress, best driver on the track. And they have to have to think that way. Yeah. And that's how it works. And if you're choosing your fan, you, you know, if you're a fan of a driver, um, you know what? Good on you. But you, you, you got to know that whether they're cocky like Max um, or they're calm and like Verstappen, not Verstappen, um, Vettel, I think, is yeah. the the number one guy for not, you know, wearing it on his sleeve that he's the best driver out there. But you got to know he believes he's the best driver out there. Yeah, he has these sort of outbursts from time to time. Then otherwise, he's perfectly fine. And right, you know, when he was with Red Bull, I remember my sister saw the Abu Dhabi race in person. Just said, "Yep, Vettel came," and then twenty seconds later, the rest of the field came by. <laughs> you know, you know, it, it's it's amazing when you get to know race car drivers on any level and you see them when they aren't in the car versus when they are in the car yeah or when they're about to get in their car then they're two very 
completely different human beings. I was thinking about the same as you, Rob, and I was thinking about what's going through their head. And they had a shot of Dan, Danny while he was in his car. Um, and you looked at him and look carefully at all the drivers and they have a goal of just shutting everything out. They've got to clear everything out of their head. Somebody was talking about these long reds. I think it was um, somebody asked Jensen, you know, how do you cope with these long reds? And he said, well, the problem is you can fall asleep. And yeah, because if you've shut everything out of your, your head, that's what you do when you go to sleep. Well, you've shut everything out of your head so you can concentrate on the race. Mm. And now that's gone. You're probably a little bit exhausted. You're enjoying that break. I can see how they could fall asleep. Yeah. And you're, you know, they were saying it's hard to think of, you know, was Mick okay and all that kind of stuff too, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I remember seeing uh, Lewis footage of Lewis Hamilton playing a computer game, but it was with a big rig and everything and big screens. And his eyes never blinked once. And he was just, his concentration level was unbelievable. And you need to be, you know, you talk about focus and, you know, I can't relate to that level of focus because if you let your mind wander, you could crash, right? Like, oh yeah. What, what would you say? Like when you were racing, was it, were you hyper focused and yeah, the adrenaline no. flowing, and then you come out of it, and the adrenaline falls away, and you feel weird, or or what? How was that? Yeah, definitely. And 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 back to the crash, I mm -hmm. was involved in some races where there were some really really horrific red flag incidents. Right. And in those red flag incidents, um, looking back, the last thing I was thinking about: how did they lose it? Are they injured? No, I did think about it. Are they injured? But that's mm -hmm. ever so brief. And you don't think how they lost it. And you don't think that you're going to lose it where they lost it. Um, but concentration, it's, it's to a hundredth of a second, thousandth of a second. You, if you lose it for a tenth of a second, yeah, you're done. It's the whole way around the track. And, and you have to really concentrate on, on, your skills and that's another reason and you brought this up a long time ago uh, about michael schumacher and if you watch what he was doing while he was racing and adjusting the car going into turns coming out of turns yep. just insane focus like i've never incredible. seen a driver i've seen them all of them make adjustments but michael was corner by corner he had yeah everything going it just constantly so mm -hmm. you gotta that frames that mindset going that speed and doing all that is very very impressive mm -hmm. so anything else about this race or is that it i'm glad it's over i'm glad that they're out of saudi arabia and mm -hmm. off to australia because yeah i'm not i we both question whether we were going to even cover this race mm -hmm. um because of saudi arabia but there we go yeah and we i think did it I've seen a lot of calls for, you know, that was a great race. Let's not go back again, basically. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, and Australia is next. I understand they've changed the course a little bit, but we'll see how that goes. I Great. Uh, on the simulations, I've always enjoyed that Albert Park circuit, but uh, we'll see how these new cars do, do there. Yes. Hey, John, talk to you then. Bye-bye. Thanks, Rob. Bye.